yesterday's episode was weird. Um, not the episode itself. It was the, uh, it was the encoding. See, after I encoded it, since it's just me talking and everything, I don't actually encode it in HD. There's no reason to. The idea is to act like a screensaver, actually, when played at full screen, and then uh, you're off, uh, the listener, you, are off doing something else. Uh, it goes back to my broadcast days, that if, um, there, there's a million ways to do a radio show, well, well there's, maybe there's ten, not a million, but, uh, there's a bunch of ways, how about that, a bunch of ways to do a radio show over the, uh, television, whatever it means, it, whatever that means to be, to get it on a screen. Uh, my thing is, on YouTube, is... I've been watching... Oh, what year is this? How long have I had a Wii? Whenever I had a Wii, I remember one of the first things I did on a Wii was go into the web browser and uh, watch YouTube. And so did many other people after I showed them that. So, I've been watching YouTube, I believe, on TV for maybe a decade, a decade and a year did I get a Wii? I had a Wii a, a long, for a long time. Um, I remember, and this stopped soon after, but I had, on a regular DS, I had the web browser. Actually, I actually have two copies of this thing. And this web browser, I remember, I remember going on YouTube, and it took forever, but then the video would play. Um, it was pretty good for, like, a year, and then it just became bad. I mean, like, unusable bad. I can still get online with it, but, eh, what's the use? So it's just a novelty to have. Oh, look, the, the Nintendo DS web browser. That, that's, that's, I do have the full-sized GBA cart that has the 10 megabytes of RAM. Um, putting the web browser into a 3DS doesn't do anything. Can't find the 10 extra megabytes of RAM. And the 3DS browser was good for a while, too. Uh, I never watched YouTube on it. Um, I watched YouTube. I remember even the, the PSP browser went to YouTube for a little while before YouTube completely changed the protocols. Uh, the but, um... I, I did use YouTube a lot, so I, uh, when I do everything, I'm thinking of, like, someone's TV. Whether they have an old 4x3 um, regular TV, and the Wii's hooked up to that, or they are using a, you know, a modern 16.9. And yeah, I, I get HD would look nicer, but the idea is so the screen doesn't burn in. They're listening to me over the TV. And I guess a lot of that has to do with having an Apple TV. An Apple TV 1, I have two of those, and then we have a 2 and a 3. So, you know, we've always had Apple TV. And uh, the YouTube was always a feature on the Apple TV. Now what I'm trying to do right now is crack open the Apple TVs and take their hard drives out. Unless there's a method to just use these as external hard drives. It's 160 gigs. It's not enough... Um, it's not enough for me to edit on, it's enough for me to store on. Um, 500 gigabytes is the least amount needed to do video editing, which I never addressed yesterday uh, about all this stuff. you got to have massive hard drives. I do address getting a hard drive, Firewire, USB, Thunder, or Lightning Bolt, or whatever it's called. I do address that. Get them big. Get them big. Do not use uh, USB solid state. Um, if you look at some of the 10 games in 10 minutes episodes, you see there's some stuttering and jumping and stuff like that. Because I, um, it's not solid state hard drives. It's things like um, USB drives. or I think in that one I was using an SD card. I was either using an SD card or a USB drive. And these are meant mainly for storage. Um, yeah, they can stream video. Yeah, they can stream music. 
And that's pushing it on them, but to stream to them, to record to them, that's really, really pushing it. Okay, so uh, that's more or less approving the minutes of the last meeting. And uh, Saturday morning cartoons. That's my main topic. It's always on my mind. Losing Saturday morning cartoons was like losing a, a brother. Um, I'm an only child. My brother was my television. That sounds pathetic. That sounds weird. But it, it's actually true. I, I didn't have any siblings. And I really didn't get along with other kids. There was a handful of kids uh, that I they did get along. Well, maybe they tolerated me. Um, but because being an only child, I was spoiled rot. Main, basically, being alone all the time, nobody ever told me this, that, and the other thing. It does create self-reliance, like Henry Jones Sr. says to Indiana in the third movie. He chews him out on the uh, Hindenburg and says, you know, great shelf of reliance. But, um... I mean, it wasn't until later, way later... Um, way, way later that I would I would meet some kindred spirits. So, um, growing up, I, I remember Saturday morning cartoons fondly, and I have weekday morning cartoons. And my memory of weekday morning cartoons uh, was uh, pre-He-Man. See, I... I always watched He-Man at the daycare center I was at. I was at, um, see, I have memories of three or four different daycare centers until finally I was at just one. But, ooh, I hated afternoon naps. I always stayed up and listened to the soap operas. But at uh, one particular daycare center, you, we'd get dropped off as kids. Uh, this is in Texas. And when would we get dropped off? I don't know. We would. We'd get dropped off. So this is my Monday through Friday routine. And um, a real religious couple ran the daycare center. Um, this was for all daycare centers, but the one I'm talking about in particular, yeah, a religious couple ran. But overall, this is how the daycare centers broke down. Now, see, in my brain, there's the orange daycare center, so-called because the interior was orange on the inside. Then there was the... Um, there was a run-down schoolhouse. Uh, well, you know, that's because it looked like a run-down schoolhouse. There was the daycare center with the religious couple. When I mean religious couple, they were... They were quite old. I mean, old. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, and you know what? They might have just been in their 50s. When I was born, that was old. Today, old? Old today is your 70s. Which is true. Today, a person is not considered old for men until they hit 72. And uh, for women, until they hit 70. That's considered old now. And um, I see it. I, I see people living out through their lives. Um, both my grandparents lived. So with the morning routine, it, it went with um, it, it went with uh, we would watch these cartoons. There was like the Tijuana Frogs. Uh, the, there was a commercial for Woody Woodpecker, and every time I saw this commercial, hmm, mm, something fishy around here. But, I mean, the commercial—I guess it was the promo commercial that that aired for years. Um, what else? Uh, for one year, we the daycare had Disney Channel, so we'd watch that Who's Puppet thing. 
Um, I, n I never really liked it. I mean, I I tolerated it, but I I didn't like it. Um, I'm not a I don't hate Winnie the Pooh or anything like that. I just didn't really care for this cartoon as a child. Let's see what else. Um, now there was like religious programming and stuff like that, but that that's Texas for you. Uh, not a bad thing at all. In fact, maybe people should get more religious on a on a Christian Jewish scale. Yes, that's on purpose. <laughs> now, um, leaving a religion aside, though, um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Re religion's fascinating, and that's a whole different topic. That's why I want to leave it aside. Uh, uh, Saturday morning cartoons is more my religion than anything, but it's not really my religion. But I mean, I did attend services regularly. But I'm talking about weekday cartoons before I get to the weekend cartoons, and, and the week ends on Saturday, so. The um, in the afternoon though, um, one of these stations um, would air He-Man. I do remember that. I don't remember what else they aired because He-Man was was the, oh superpowers, superpowers and He-Man. So was I think He-Man was the four thirty and superpowers was four. I don't remember what aired at three. The main reason I don't remember what aired at 3 was um, because they would send us to preschool when we got to a certain age. So, um, and I, I remember things very vividly. Like I remember watching Dust Fall. I remember this girl peeled the lead paint off the desk. Um, I remember, I can describe to you the interiors of these buildings with exacting detail. So, um, after that, we moved to uh, Las Vegas. And Las Vegas had a completely different TV schedule. There was Channel 5 and Channel 21. Channel 21 had just come on the air. And um, Channel 5 aired weekday morning cartoons, and then they had weekday afternoon cartoons. And when Channel 21... Channel 5 tried to compete, KBBU. Trying to compete against KRLR, and these are call signs because they they ran sitcoms and stuff. They weren't always airing cartoons in the afternoon. And um, this actually hurt them because kids want cartoons. I don't want to watch Silver Spoons reruns or whatever sitcom they decided to air. And. Um, for a few years, though, 5 and 21 were really, really good. Um, they had very similar schedules. And this is even after uh, 5 affiliated with Fox. It became Fox 5. And KRLR 21, and they kept calling themselves the home team, but whatever. Uh, today, KRLR is known as uh, KVMY. Um, not entirely true. I'll explain. Recently, um, Rory Reed inherited through the will of uh, Jim Rogers, the old owner of Sunbelt Communications. He inherited uh, KSNV, which was formerly KVBC, Channel 3. And then he owned... Um, and at the time, Sinclair Broadcasting owned KR, or KR, KVMY and um, KVCW, which was formerly KFBT, or sometimes they went as Gold 33. They ran each other's programming at that point in time. So um, the channels that were owned, that were owned by... Sinclair were KVMY and KVCW. Sunbelt owned, at least in Las Vegas. I mean, I can't even talk about or speculate outside of Las Vegas. Uh, Sunbelt, which was Jim Rogers' company, owned um, KSNB. But they couldn't compete. Uh, the blunt, honest truth why after Jim Rogers' personal fortune was no longer there 
the they couldn't compete because they were well, they were too indoctrinated with Marxism, creating fake news and controversy on their news broadcasts. So Las Vegas viewers weren't watching to begin with. And then they lost, what really killed them is they lost Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy to KLAS. Which I don't hear any complaints about their news broadcasts or any complaints. Uh, no one's been complaining about Channel 3 since Sinclair's purchase. So Rory Reed and friends went ahead and um, allowed Sinclair to come in and purchase them. Sinclair wanted to buy the channel for years. They've always wanted a big network affiliate in, in a major market. So they finally got that, and uh, Rory Reed's company, what's left a Sunbelt, I guess, uh, they call themselves Mountain West or something, Mountain Communications, by this point, went ahead and took over the Channel 21 uh, frequency, which they sold to Armstrong Williams, who's a, a pro-constitutionalist guy. So I don't know what, what Mountain West Communications or Sunbelt or whatever they're calling Valley Broadcast. I don't know whatever they call it, whatever they call themselves, whatever they're doing today. And uh, Sinclair owns, Sinclair still owns that, and they own Channel 33. And instead of letting go of their affiliations, they, they went ahead and slammed everything onto one frequency on Channel 33. And then they have their affiliations over at um, KSNV. I don't get 21, so I can't comment on on the status of Channel 21 at all. But uh, back when they were KVVU and KRLR, KVVU being Channel 5, the only other competition they had was PBS, and KLVX, Channel 10, was airing the thing Sesame Street, Square One, stuff like that. Um, so children like me had to really, really figure out how to work a VCR. And that's why I have uh, things like Club Mario. And Well, I did have video power, but I actually erased those episodes just because I wasn't watching them after a while. You know, it's a purge. A pur people do personal purges all the time. I took a whole bunch of DVDs I wasn't watching and sold them to Zia Records for a few hundred dollars and spent that money on power bill. Um, <laughs> that's life, though. Yeah, I might purge my Blu-rays just because there's a lot of them I, I'm not watching anymore. And, you know, that that's just the way things are. So, I had, um, like, video power would come on at the ridiculous time on Channel 21 at 6 a.m. So I would just leave a tape running. I don't know about tape running. I would set the timer and then get it. But, um... Other than that, and I do want to emphasize this, especially for anybody who's come, came over from the Las Vegas time machine. It's the Las Vegas time machine. It wasn't the watch cartoons all day time machine. Um, when people ask, do I have this, do I have that, you're, you're talking to the wrong channel. You, it's like walking into Home Depot and asking if I have groceries. I carry some of the things, yes. So maybe if you need a light bulb or an air conditioning filter or batteries, duct tape, I have all of that if I'm a hardware store. So it's the same thing. If if I'm a if I'm the Las Vegas time machine, um, one of my so one of my major rules is everything's gotta originate from Las Vegas. But it's not completely true. I have stuff from Forum. I have stuff from uh, Seattle. I have um, stuff I want to cut up from uh, Minneapolis. And, but the overall, the overall is to, to present things that are representative of Las Vegas. Uh, going as far back as I can. The farthest back I've gotten is 1981. I do have uh, some old Las Vegas... Well, I do have some old Las Vegas footage. Some people say it's the 50s, some say it's the 60s. One person even told me it's the 70s. I, I actually don't care, nor do I know. You know what? It, it's old Las Vegas. That's all that counts. The, the best footage of old Las Vegas, go watch uh, Diamonds Are Forever, Las Vegas Story, Viva Las Vegas. Um, 
in those movies, even though locations have changed and everything, I can still take you to where everything was filmed. It's weird. I can do a walking tour. I can point out exactly where the gorilla thing was in Circus Circus and Diamonds Are Prep. Now, here's, um, so Channel 21 and Channel 5, KVVU, KRLR, not in that order. And then eventually, uh, KFBT would join in. Um, this is going to be weird. Our Telemundo station, Channel 39, uh, KBLR, was actually also, they aired, they had G.I. Joe. Oh, yeah, that was, that was awesome. They had G.I. Joe. Channel 5 had GoBots, Inspector Gadget. Um, 21 had Flintstones, the Jetsons, Woody Woodpecker, um, and obviously the PBS shows, uh, MathNet, which was part of Square One TV, 321 Contact, and then something else that PBS or KLVX aired was helicopter footage with the time and date at the bottom of the screen in computer font, and then they would play, um, music. Today, this music, it sounds similar to Yanni or Giovanni or, um, you know, these other uh, computer, what do they call, New Age, whatever, I don't know. But these were a little bit more upbeat. Um, I actually had a tape. I, I had two copies of tape. I gave one to a friend. I don't know what happened to my copy of the tape. It was a nice tape, too. Um, the best way to say, what does this music sound like? is um, either the Canyon MIDI file or the Passport MIDI file. <laughs> if you know what those are, then you know what I'm talking about. And why do I mention this? Because we, we would watch this. Um, we would watch this stuff. We even watched it in class one time in fifth grade. And this time the camera was at the beach. No music, just letting the, the sultry sounds of the ocean play over the uh, footage. That was, um, I, had, I haven't seen it since 1993. I began to phase it out completely. And then I emailed KLVX about 10 years ago. Nobody ever answered my question. Now, they have to, actually, because they're a public entity. Um, and I've had that. I've, I've had city council people never answer my question. That's illegal. That's illegal because I'm their boss. Uh, literally in Nevada, under the NRSs, the citizenry is the boss of the bureaucracy. I don't know about any other state. I only know Nevada because I only studied law in Nevada. Yeah, that's right, folks. I could have been an attorney. <laughs> Not have any of these problems. I have a whole different set of problems. I can't handle working like that. It's not worth the money to me. So, finally... Um, Turtles was on Channel 21 and Super Mario Bros. Super Show was on Channel 5. They used to air the Super Show at 3 o'clock, so we always missed the first half. Now, here's my thing to Channel 5. To the program director under Rusty Durante, the traffic engineer. Scheduling. Hello! <laughs> yeah, I know that came out pretty loud, but, you know... Um, speaking as someone who was in traffic engineering for uh, a tele two television stations, actually. No. Club Mario should air, or excuse me, Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Fuck Club Mario. Super Mario Brothers Super Show should have aired at 4.30. In LA, it was airing at 6 a.m. the one time I watched it. It was weird. It was weird. Then they aired Turtles at 7. Okay, so that station in LA had their shit together, <laughs> Because then the kids would wake up, they'd watch Club Mario, they'd watch something in between, they'd watch Ninja Turtles, and they're out the door to school. Um, because then that same channel, I remember, had Disney Afternoon. We did not have Disney Afternoon in Las Vegas until... Ooh, 94. Maybe, yeah, 94 about, thereabouts. We... It was weird. Channel 5... Because, see, Disney Afternoon in other markets aired on Fox affiliates. This is documented in both. Um, there's a book on Fox Network, and then there's a book called Disney War. I don't remember what the Fox one is called, but they both confirm that, yeah. Um, 
Fox and Disney had a good relationship for the Disney afternoon. And whatever reason in Las Vegas, we, we got the Disney cartoons, but they were moved to the morning by the time I was in fifth grade. They were eventually uh, totally, completely phased out. Um, and then Channel 21 picked it up. But they 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 aired really weird things. Like, in 1998, I caught DuckTales on, like, at 5.30 or 6 in the morning. Um, not not that I was really... No, no, I was, I was... No, how would I... You know, by that point in time, I'd watch VH1 or MTV in the morning for music videos. And then I'd catch maybe just Batman or Animaniacs or something. Um... Now I want to I want to wrap up the whole weekday thing in the next few minutes here. So, so what's considered Las Vegas was a very strange market. For instance, uh, anyone who grew up in Las Vegas and tells you they like Thundercats did not see it until Toonami reran it. Reason: Thundercats aired at eight thirty in the morning on Channel Five, and before it was the comic strip, which had the related. Um, what are they called Silverhawks or something like that. So, anyone who says they like Thundercats in Las Vegas is an absolute liar. Transformers. Transformers was not popular here because it it, it didn't air till the Beast Wars era. Error. <laughs> yeah, the Beast Wars era. <laughs> That's not an accident when I think about it. The Beast Wars uh, series aired on Sunday mornings on Channel Twenty One. So, Transformers actually, GoBots aired, and GoBots were huge here. Um, everybody saw Voltron. Voltron came on right before Inspector Gadget, I think at 3.30 or something like that. And that's the thing, the schools here didn't let out till 3 o'clock. And then we'd get home and there'd be Voltron, there'd be Inspector Gadget. And, you know, they expected us to be at school at 8.30. Those school technically didn't start at 9. I actually fought this point and won in 5th grade. Yeah, as a little kid. To teach uh, the bitch that she was, she went ahead and uh, marked me tardy for showing up uh, 5 minutes after the second bell. School didn't start till the 3rd bell. It says in the school handbook, 9 to 3. 9 to three eleven actually. And you know, that was a load of shit, and I fought it. And the the principal agreed with me that you know, the, hey, look, he pointed it out. You know, he doesn't have to be at school until nine o'clock sharp. No one does. Um, you know that that's how you form great debaters and statesmen and, and politicians is by having a principal like that believe. And the student has the right to challenge authority when the authority has abused the power. Um, you know, why Why on earth she thought, who knows? She liked to throw her tenure around, plus her weight. Um, anyone who knows me knows who I'm talking about, and, you know, I, I don't care. I don't care. She can be in her 70s or 80s now. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I'm not one of these people who fawns over my teachers. Fuck them all! I hated school, and, and I don't really give a shit about my teachers. I learned more by reading on my own. Um, my first grade teacher is the one I, I, um, I truly give a damn, and then there's a few in high school, and all my college professors I love. So... Moving on to Saturday morning cartoons, because there's nothing more to say about weekday cartoons in Las Vegas. There isn't. I've addressed all the points. If you want specific questions about Thundercats or whatever, if you have a memory and you, you grew up in Las Vegas, and you're like, no, I remember watching Thundercats or whatever, um, then you were younger than me. and Or you had a stay-at-home mom. Me, my friends, we all had to be at daycare and school. Uh... Our parents usually dropped us off. Like in my case, I got dropped off. Uh, I, weekday morning cartoons were were a pleasure for me because I got dropped off 
um, between 7 and 7.30 every morning. Because my mom had to be at work at 8. And, um, and then um, if I watched weekday afternoon cartoons, it, it was usually because as an after-school program at, at the Catholic school and then later the, element, the public elementary school I was at, until I was um, old enough to start going home even though I lived around the corner until I was old enough to start going home and then I'd, I'd watch things like Double Dare Fun House, Find, Finders Keepers um, Fun House aired at 4.30 on I mean, Channel 5 kept these kids game shows going so there's that on that now Saturday morning usually what I did, this is my routine um when I in Texas, I I would be woken up. Well, I don't know. I just wake up, and then I would go downstairs and turn on the TV. Um, this is all between the. I don't know. I, I remember walking a lot, so um, yeah, I watched that. Sunday mornings was weird. They they had anime and stuff like that. For the first day of the week, the cartoons were things like anime. Uh, I gotta change the battery. Um, and uh, so it was pretty weird. It was actually weird stuff. Yeah. Honey, honey. Um, Kimba the lion, which was repackaged as Leo the lion. Yeah. Good stuff, though. And Saturday mornings, my favorite was Looney Tunes, uh, Sylvester and Tweety, Roadrunner, stuff like that. And then obviously Superpowers. When uh, we moved to Las Vegas, um, I remember watching a lot of Ewoks and Droids. And that was probably the last season it ran. Um, see, my mom got this idea that she needed to help out with the Koreans here in Las Vegas. Fuck them. Every one of them backstabbed us in business. And there's only a few that we remain friendly with. I, I just can't stand it because it had ruined my Saturday morning. So I usually sneak out, find a TV, and watch Saturday morning cartoons. I love the real Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is a special movie, and I, 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 I will piss on Paul Feig's grave for what him and Sony decided to do with Ghostbusters. Retrocore has this thing. This is a real Ghostbusters movie, and you know it's the cinema scenes from the I think it's the Xbox version, and that that's what Ghostbusters is supposed to be. Um, well, I'll be honest on why Ghostbusters is so special to me. It was, um, I saw the movie twice in theaters. My, my dad took me to Ghostbusters you know, on a matinee. Then he's like, oh, we gotta see this movie. So a few days later we went back to see the movie. Um, and you know, at a normal time. And this is in, uh, this is near Fort Hood, Texas. Did we go to the Did we go to the Forts movie theater or was there a movie theater by the mall? I don't remember. I think it was the movie theater by the mall. Um the, the Killeen Mall. And um Yeah, that was the last movie I saw with my father. He passed away. So, it, 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 Ghostbusters, when the cartoon came out and everything, Ghostbusters is different for me than a lot of other people. It, it actually means something to me that doesn't mean to anyone else. The real Ghostbusters, to me, felt like an extension of my father alive. And... Uh, you know, that's something that he would have watched with me on Saturday morning. My stepdad, you know, all he wanted to watch is sports. Look, maybe, um, I don't know. 
He maybe has an inferiority complex or something. Beats me. But I don't, I don't care for sports. I don't. I like playing soccer video games. I had to clarify that with a judge here. <laughs> Las Vegas, not for a legal reason. We were, we had a, we were having a friendly chat, and I, I'm like, oh yeah, uh, I play uh, soccer. And she misunderstood me, and she thought that I wanted to meet with um, my own team, and and what am I gonna do? Play a bunch of get a bunch of court workers, I guess. And I'm like, no, no, no. I play FIFA, PES, um, VR soccer, um, so forth and so on. So, Ghostbusters, I I really liked it, and that's what drew me to ABC over NBC. I used to watch NBC as a kid for Saturday mornings in Texas, and then we'd switch to CBS and ABC. We'd just kind of bounce around, actually, cartoon to cartoon. My mom hated, I think it was called Kid Video. I'm not positively sure. There was this music video show. She just absolutely hated it. There's also Benji and something, uh, Alien Prince or something like that. Um, and we watched that and it was, it's so weird. I have a very, very worn out tape of this particular Benji series. Um, I mean, I, I really thought these things were weird looking. And it, like Zacks and the Alien Prince, something like that. So, I do remember watching, uh, and I did like Superpowers. I don't care for Marvel. I still don't really care for Marvel. I find Wolverine and Deadpool are the two only interesting characters at Marvel. And I have a lot of Marvel comics, so don't don't you dare point a dirty finger at me. I just would not read Marvel. I'll read some of their more experimental stuff, but I'm outside of Deadpool and Wolverine. Nah. Marvel's got nothing for me. Now, when I started to take charge on my own, I started recording things. Not only did I record weekday cartoons, I started recording... uh, Sunday and Saturday cartoon. Uh, Channel 5. KBBU was very strange out here. They had things like um, the news for kids or something like that. They had like all these... They were done well though. They weren't like these crappy Marxist propaganda nature worshipping. Yeah, that's a religion by the way. Pieces of shit that all they're trying to air all the time now to brainwash the kids into being uh, snowflake trash. What they used to show are these things that were informative and would get a kid's uh, brain thinking. Beekman's World um, was on 5, and then it jumped to 8, and then it finally jumped to Channel 33. This is much later, though. I'm talking about the 89, 90, 91. 89 through 91 here, 92. Then there was X-Men, stuff like that. Fox Kids would come on the scene, they had Eat the Cat, whatever. Now, I can mention all of this, and some people will gush over that I mentioned it or whatever. And like, oh, he mentioned Eat the Cat. Oh, he mentioned the tick. I used to watch that, too. I don't care. Don't buy into my acceptance. I'm not going to buy into yours. I don't have to be an accepted suck. Okay? I'm just reminiscing here on what I like to enjoy. But what I really enjoyed was Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego? Uh, reboot. Where in the world was Carmen San Diego on PBS? Math Men, stuff like that. But just speaking of Saturday mornings, I did enjoy Eek the Cat. Um, and then eventually Animaniacs, Tiny Toons. These moved to WB. I remember WB's first Saturday. Um, I Do I have Earthworm Jim from that first broadcast? I don't know. But it was to me it was pretty neat. And I really liked Kids WB better than I liked Fox. The problem was Channel 33's feed wasn't very good. Um, you know, you can only do so much. Uh, Count Cool Rider did his best with the station, and uh, I give him props for that. He did. He worked with what he had, and he made something of it. So I, I did enjoy when they had the WB affiliation. And something that 
Cal Cool Rider had his programmers do was after Kids WB ended, there would be more children programming until 5 p.m. Yeah, another five hours, a full ten hours of children programming. And what aired? Darkstalkers, Dragon Ball, the Beekman's World, a few other anime that is long forgotten, other action cartoons. Channel 21 had things like, like I said, Beast Wars, Double Dragon, Mutant League later, um, and then they eventually moved that to weekdays, Cops, so forth and so on. And then, and then after Sinclair bought Channel 33, or took over in a management deal, um, so Count Cool Rider could go pursue other business ventures like customizing cars. Uh, they went ahead and they, they took over a lot of the cartoons 33 had. I know I'm jumping here. This is a very big topic. Now, let's move on. What killed Saturday morning cartoons? And Sunday morning by proxy. Um, the Clarence Thomas hearings killed it for... NBC. They rather air that than cartoons. I don't. I don't care what the cost and all that stuff is associated. Um, they said they weren't making enough money from the cartoons. Bullshit. You, the Nielsen's are flawed. You you just didn't know how to use new technology to find out who was watching what. Um, when I say literally everyone watched Captain N, literally everyone watched Captain N. But this is how it broke down for us. Whatever aired at 7 o'clock in the morning, um, us kids didn't give a shit. We were waiting for Captain N, which was on at 8 o'clock. Ninja Turtles would start from 8.30 to 9. and had a full hour on CBS. Then we'd go switch to CBS to watch Turtles. X-Men didn't air till 10 a.m. on Fox. So that's how we all ended up watching Eat the Cat. And this is how we would... I'm, I'm giving this as one example. So, we'd all bounce around. Eventually, when Turtles and, you know, Captain... Well, they took that off. So, once NBC was off, then for a long time, for a few years... And this was a long time to a child. Then it was ABC, CBS, and um, Fox... And then Independence would go ahead and try to air their own shit on Saturday mornings. Usually weekday cartoons that they bartered for, and then they would air them there and, you know, try to compete. So 21 had a few things on uh, at this time. And, um, wow, all I have to say is wow. When Reboot came out in the 94 season, but by then, wow, my, my routine starting in 8th grade I really didn't watch cartoons all that often um, I mean I still watched them because they were on but I didn't really watch them so um, because I would I would wake up because of school I'd naturally wake up at 5 in the morning but on Saturdays and Sundays I would play on Saturdays it was um, it was routine for me to always play SimCity until cartoons started and on Sunday, I actually have no memory because I'd go out Saturday night after Weird Science. It was to be 10.30 at night. And uh, I guess I'd go have some kind of fun. <laughs> I think I usually went to Rocky Horror at the Torrey Pines Cinema. So, I would... In fact, that is what my brain tells me. <laughs> I would... Um, gather here that they wanted to use low ratings and then this minority this fascist minority I don't I don't care if they're right wing left wing or chicken wing um, went ahead and said oh we don't like cartoons or whatever uh, Saber Spark covers this pretty accurately so they passed this law that you know this is the way cartoons are supposed to be no no that's the first amendment forbids that law and nobody's ever challenged it I, I would challenge it if I was a TV station or a producer, I would challenge it. I would say, this law is unconstitutional. It has done more harm 
than good for children. We need to get rid of it. We need to bring back cartoons and make them into a viable industry. Now you're you're thinking, okay, how can we do that with Netflix and piracy and all that? You know what? You're gonna, you're not going to believe this. I know how to thwart video piracy. You see, using 60 frames a second as a full broadcast. So that means they'd have to go to a lower source to do this. There's a way to actually turn off the recording mechanism. Using HDMI technology, boom, it stops. There'd be, it'd be very hard to capture it. Be 100% foolproof? No. I know techniques in, in copy protection that would just blow your mind. And yes, there is a way to put a frequency in between frames that cannot be seen by the naked eye that the computer will interpret and stop the recording. And it can be put in once a second. I've seen it done. I've seen it done on the news broadcast of all things. Okay, the other thing is if I get a cartoon series and I was a, a programmer or something, these are solutions. The first thing I do is I make sure it's available nowhere else. That means people have to tune in. I can tell them, set your DVRs to record my show. But broadcasting as a whole, Saturday morning was the first death. They're going to learn real quick that they cannot compete with on-demand. That the, my, the, 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 the audience that wants a continuous live over-the-air stream is gone. They're gone. I spend most of my time, most, you know, if you wanted to run a commercial or something, a promo, here you go. America's watching YouTube. Used to be America's watching ABC. Yeah. This is CBS. Well, now it can be this is Netflix. Hulu, you're home for TV. You used to watch over the air. If it's on Crackle, it's on. I mean, come on. You can come up with all kinds of slogans for things. Crunchyroll. Anime the way it should be. People want on demand. And this is the fault of the Hollywood 8. Back when they were probably more or less than 8. It was the fault of 20th Century Fox, specifically, who went ahead and gave magnetic video... Uh, the rights to experiment. There was home video attempts before. A uh, user on YouTube has a 8mm uh, with sound uh, version of Towering Inferno. So it has cut down to a one hour reel. So there were attempts at home video before, but it was not effective. And um, if I had done it, if I had done home video, oh, oh yeah, absolutely, I would have, um, like Bob Crane, I would have all, well, I wouldn't do porn, but I would have done Saturday morning cartoons and sitcoms and stuff like that. And um, if, but, you know, that comes with well. And um, now there's nothing to record. Now that I have the ability and I have the means and resources and practically unlimited data, especially if I knock down the resolution for preservation's sake. I have absolutely no way to record. I mean, excuse me, no reason to record. It all started with the Clarence Commons hearing bumping Captain N off. If they bumped Captain N off. Uh, I don't care about any of the other cartoons. Uh, truthfully, I, I, you know, being a video game and comic book fanatic, I didn't give a shit what else was on NBC. I wanted Captain Ed and Super Mario World. Um, I understand the quality of animation was not as good in that season. I understand these were repackaged as Captain Ed something. Whatever. Same with video power. They took the cartoons and repackaged them as the acclaimed masters. You know, it's, and it didn't matter by this point. It, you know, for people who ask me about these things, you know, stop. Please. Please, stop. You know, I, I didn't record everything. I probably recorded 1% of things. 
sometimes I re-recorded over stuff. When I when I figured out how to use a VCR and do recordings when I was six, so I could watch Voltron and Thundercats myself. Eventually, Spectre Gad, whatever. Um, you know, I had a bunch of original first-run broadcasts of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show come from KBBU. My stepdad thought it would be better to record Star Trek IV when we could have rented it at the video store for a dollar. And, um, you know, so forth and so on. I have a very different attitude because of what has happened to me. Um, I do my best for video preservation. I would have loved it if I could. And, and now, you, a lot of you might love me for this. I have not every broadcast, but I have 95% of Vortex. Yeah. As strange as that sounds, I have recorded Vortex. I have 95% from what I can tell of Vortex. These episodes are not for sale. What I'm going to do is when I find the last Vortex recording... What I might do is I might go ahead and cut out the shows and leave the commercials. I have 95% of Vortex. The one thing I did cut out was wrestling. And that's because the reason I have Vortex was Phil wanted Saturday morning cartoons for his household at the time. This was the best way to do it. His kids were younger, and he found out... I gave Phil some Club Mario recordings to go ahead and make fun of do podcasts for it. It never materializes. You know, there, there's a handful of reasons why. That's a different topic for a different time about time management. But he stuck them in his van, which has a DVD player, and made the kids shut the hell up. So that's what, this was when they were, this is 10 years ago when they were really young. And so then I'm like, oh, so we started giving more and more Saturday morning cartoons. Yes, there's probably tapes that I gave to Phil, unless he gave them back so I could reuse. They have things like Power Rangers on their first time broadcast. Yeah. So, Vortex, um, either I had weeks that didn't turn out, or I missed a week, or I forgot to put in the disc. Yeah, they're all on disc. Or the DVR crapped out, whatever. I only missed 5%. Are the recordings in good quality? Absolutely not. I'm holding five hours on a DVD. I'd combine two weeks together by using a DVD or W, and I would take both weeks, maybe three weeks even, and sometimes cram them all on. And the reason is quantity over quality. But guess what? Yes, I do have 95% of Vortex recordings. And no, they're not for sale. No, I will not be trading these anytime soon. Main reason? I don't know where the discs are. The second main reason? It would... It would actually... It, it'd be... It'd take me years to go through all my discs, find out what's finalized, what's not finalized, so forth and so on, go ahead, take them out, all this stuff. This isn't all easy to do, especially for one person. Phil's about the only person who knows exactly what to do and how to do it. I can teach maybe a handful of other people how to do it. Like Dark Gage or, or uh, whatever she calls herself, Wolf Kitty 95, which she was not born in 95. But uh, other than that, I, I really don't have people who can do what I do or people I can teach to do what I do in the way that I do it. Um... And I don't like that. That's kind of why I do these. Is it, It's a public record of what I'm trying to get out there. Oh, yeah, you can contact me if you want to help. That means you'd have to move to Las Vegas. I can't pay you. Because I don't make any money from the show. Um, well, you know, so forth and so on. I, I would love to have these out in the open. I, you know, copyright laws be damned. I would upload them to YouTube if I could. I wouldn't upload the shows because I want you to still support the people who have the shows. But there's no way I can go ahead and get through all this. Um, I can look at the vortexes and see what I got and don't got, what I need and don't need. So, 
Uh, yeah, I have 95% of the Vortex. I also have Saturday morning cartoons from RTV when they took over for a little while. So, see, Vortex was not the death of Saturday morning cartoons. The death of Saturday morning cartoons came, uh, was it last year or the year before, when PBJ, which was half-owned by Dream DreamWorks, went ahead and DreamWorks pulled out of the partnership, which is a real shame because DreamWorks could have totally worked with RTV and, and having PBJ. They just could not find, I guess, the right sponsors or something. And yeah, I'm promoting um, PBJ. It's long gone, though. Funimation even had a all-cartoon channel. We don't have Kubo. We don't have Kubo here in, uh, in Las Vegas. We don't. Um, the KOL Secret Slumber Party or Kuopolis or whatever. You know when the local affiliate aired that? They aired it. They aired it in the middle of the night from like 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. or something like that. Yeah. That's the kind of crap we had to put up with. They, they, they did everything in their their way, these networks, to kill Saturday morning cartoons by proxy Sunday morning and weekday. I feel sorry for the kids who don't have Netflix or internet connections who have to be damned to watching this shit. And no, no. I don't I don't look at cable. Cable is a non sequenta. Cable's a non factor. Not everyone has cable. To this day the majority of households in America still get over the air television. It's always been two thirds to one third. Cable's dying and you know, we can't get real numbers on cable, but cable sucks. I don't why should I pay for television? Not seriously. I'm not talking about an on-demand service. Why should I pay for television? Why should I be on their schedule? They should be on mine. I'm the individual. They want my money. I have the power. So you need to look at things that way. You need to look at things in a representative point of view. They want your money. And how do they get that? They want to convince you to subscribe to their service, and they think that they provide something for you. If if you spend your time thinking about TV shows and, and stuff like that, they've got you. They've got you. It's a religion. They've got you. It's an opium of the masses. Didn't you listen to Dracula and Castlevania Symphony of the Night? So, you know, hey, I love video games. I love cartoons. But I'm not beholden to them. I go and I, I say, well, do I want it? Do I not want it? Do I have an affection? for this thing. Ghostbusters, yes, I have a memory there. Okay? Looney Tunes, yes, I have a memory there. Simpsons, yes, I have a memory for the first few seasons. But I don't I don't watch Simpsons today. If I do, it's on Hulu. And that's only if I get around to it. When I'm not doing something else. I've, I've got a... I truly do have a million other things to do. i got a million other things I'm planning for. And a million is probably only 1% of what I'm talking about here. Make these people work on your schedule. Netflix understands this. I don't care about their politics or anything right now. Netflix understands this. Amazon understands this. eBay understands this. Hulu understands this. Apple understands this. Microsoft understands this. So... That's why they're doing what they're doing to get people to go buy things on demand. On demand, what does that mean? I don't mean on demand or in demand or as a brand name or something. That was a novelty back then. What that means is I go and I buy the Blu-ray. I buy the book. I buy the download. On demand on my demand. Larry Ellison's got some interesting thoughts about this stuff, too. Uh, watch, um, I believe, episode three of Triumph of the Nerds. The way you get this is you go get the DVD, or you can contact Bob Pringley, bob at pringley.com. You can ask him where to go ahead and get, get it. Um, I remember one of his podcasts for I, Cringely. He actually went on... <laughs> He went on YouTube to critique his own videos. It's an interesting uh, episode of his podcast. 
So, uh, you need to contact me, or you want to make a Patreon donation, which would actually help improve the show. Um, you know, that's coffeeforbinky at gmail.com, or you can leave comments below, and I'll eventually get to them, or I'll delete them if I don't like them, or I may not answer them at all. Alright, so that's coffeeforbinky at a com. C-O-F-F, number four, B-I-N-K-Y at gmail.com. <laughs>